Hey folks, Scott Fisher here. You ever do a drawing that you don't want to paint over because you're pretty happy with the way the drawing turned out? Well, I'm going to take you through my process for getting that drawing scanned and then mounting it onto a bigger panel. So I've got a cool drawing here that I've done. Maybe I want to keep it, hold on to it. It's an idea that I liked revisiting. It's a dress that turns into a sailboat. I mean, pretty cool, fun stuff. That's what I wanted to paint this painting bigger. So I've got this massive 24 by 36 panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that drawing onto this and I'll take you through my process for doing that real quick. Okay, first up, let's get it into the computer. So I'm going to take my old UMAX PowerLook 1100 scanner, which is a great scanner, but it actually goes back to the 90s. So good though, so I'm hoping it never dies. Anyway, I'm going to take it and I'm going to just put my drawing on here. Since it's a small scanner, 8.5 by 11, I'm going to scan it in three passes going down. Make sure I get every section of it and I'm going to flip it the other way. And so in total, we'll have six tiny bits of it the puzzle and then we'll bring it into photoshop and assemble the thing okay guys this shows you my final drawing ready to print out but how do we get it to that stage well the first thing i want to show you is photo merge oh my goodness this is going to add years to your life it's going to be so nice okay so remember i scanned this thing in six pieces those are my individual puzzle pieces that are now in my computer. So to get these together, I used to assemble them by hand and erase out and it would take forever to get the lines to line up. Uh, and then Photoshop comes to the rescue. So under in Photoshop, under File, under Automate, if you drop down to Photo Merge, here you go. You hit Browse, you look for the files that you want. Those are all six of them hanging out there. I select all six files and I hit Go. And now they are ready to be photo merged. I just hit OK, and here we go. This only takes about 15 seconds in real time. Holy cow, that saves me a lot of time. You spend hours doing this stuff. The next step is going to be to increase the contrast on this a little bit. Sometimes graphite, when it gets scanned, the light reflects on it and it comes out a little bit lighter. But even, even without that, I think I would want this to be a little bit of a darker sketch for me to do it. Very simple to do in Photoshop, of course. Just go to Auto Contrast right under Image, right there. Hit that. That's going to make everything have that little bit of extra snap. Now that is what we're going to print out. It's going to be scaled up to our 24 by 36 inch paper and uh, we'll hit the printer now. For printing, you might have to take it to like a Staples or someplace that's got a large format printer. I've got a 24 inch wide printer here, the Epson Surecolor P7000. So I'm, I can go pretty big here just at the house, but if not, there's a ton of printing places that could do it for you. I'm using the Epson Enhanced Matte Paper. It's a little bit thicker than the, than the you know, the, the well, than the super thin matte paper. And I like that for mounting it because I'm really gonna saturate this and soak it in a second, as you will see. So we got the big paper, we've got the big printer, we've got Cthulhu, what? No, it's actually a mind flare. Let's print. <laughs> Here's the supplies I'm going to use for this. I've got my golden heavy gel and the semi-gloss version. I've got two pretty fat, pretty, pretty stiff brushes. I've got a jar of water here. I've got a water spray gun, whatever. You can put it in your water. And I've got my, my panel. Now, you can use any kind of panel that you want. It's easy just to find the ampersand pre-gessoed stuff. You can also get the non-primed stuff, but this is what I happen to have around the studio at the moment. So we'll use this. Now, this is a cradled panel, so it's got extra support structure on the back of it. When you start getting to a large enough scale, you're going to need that else your board will warp. We've got our printout. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take the water bottle, we're going to hose down this printout, and then everything happens pretty fast. We've got our drawing printed out to scale. It is 18 by, I mean, sorry, it's 24 by 36, and that is exactly the size of our panel. Interesting happens, though, when you wet paper. It's going to expand usually one direction more than another direction because of the weave of the paper. So we're going to saturate this with our water gun here real quick, knock it down with the sprayer, let it really get soaked. It sounds sort of strange, but that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna soak this thing up and then it'll expand a little bit. Then we'll put the gel medium on the back of it and on the panel and then put the two together. Okay, with my lovely assistant, Teresa, say hello, Teresa. It's time to now 
spread that gel medium. Now this thing is super wet, guys, and it's already expanded. I've had it sitting here long enough. And now I'm just gonna liberally coat the back of it while Teresa does the same thing on the panel. And I put it on pretty thick. I don't want any huge gobs on there, but we definitely don't want it to be thin and dry in a spot. And the hope that is with us doing it on both both things, um, if there's missing some gel in one of them, it'll be available in the other one to fill in that little bit. I'm gonna flip it around this way. It's good to have an assistant when the piece is this big because you gotta move pretty fast and this gel will start drying. He is good at that. All right. And with that, it is time to marry the two of them. Now I have little notch marks where their crop is going to be, so Teresa will be able to line it up pretty good with that. There we go. And it slides around pretty good on the surface. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It just needs to totally cover. And now it's overhanging a little bit because it expanded. So it's a little bit wider now than the 18, uh, than the uh, 24 by 36. So the next thing you have to do is you have to quickly use another brush and try to smooth out any air bubbles. Think of it like when you get a new screen protector on your phone and they get all the air bubbles out of it. I like to use a brush to do this. I used to use a brayer. The brayer would leave marks in my paper because my paper was pretty thick. So suddenly I would have these marks in my paper, these little like drag marks, like edge line marks. I'm just gonna marry these two things together. See how much it's expanded. It's actually over a quarter inch on this far side. So that gives you an idea of how far out it'll go once it's wet. All right, how are we feeling about that? Good. Found it. The light. That was any bubbles. Yes, we try to use the light to see any bubbles that need smoothing, any gel pockets underneath that got a little thick. Smooth all those out so it dries nice and flat. Pretty good down there. Let's switch spots so I can get from your side. Okay, it looks like our drawing is successfully mounted to the panel. You can see where it's overhanging in a couple of spots. I should actually add that I printed the piece out longer than I needed to. So I printed it out 24 by 38, even though it was going on the 24 by 36 panel. Just wanted to have that extra overhang. So it didn't expand that much on the top and the bottom. It did expand on the left and the right. Okay, we'll trim that up in a bit. First, I want to let this completely dry and get nice and, you know, firm and taut and smooth. Uh, you could see us at the end there taking brushes and more gel medium and coating the top of this and squeegeeing out any air bubbles or any piles of of, uh, of gel medium that might have been under there. So it's nice and smooth. And with that, let's let this thing dry. And with that, we've given this ample time to dry. So now I'm just gonna trim down the edges of this with an X-Acto knife, pretty easy. I mean, you know, because you use the edge of the board to guide your line, so you can pretty much slide it right along and trim it down. There we have it, folks. All trimmed down, as smooth as can be, nice and level. Not quite ready for paint, though. I'm going to put a few more coats of the gel medium on top of this. I don't know, two or three, just to really seal it in pretty good. 
you guys don't have to watch all that. I think you get it by now. So we're going to fade to black. But I appreciate you guys sticking in and uh, checking out how we do this. And maybe not as exciting as throwing paint down on the surface, but pretty practical. And I get asked this question a lot about mounting stuff to the surface. So this is my process. There's many of them out there. Modulate it as you wish to make it work for you. And with that, we'll see you guys next time. I'm just going to seal this thing under a few more coats. And we'll be done.